Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and this is Thinking in Stability and Change, Level 3, Explaining Stability and Change. When you're trying to explain stability and change, the first thing you always want to do is define the system that you're trying to explain. And we're going to look for ways to explain a system that is stable, so that is not changing, and a system that is changing over time. And to really explain something, what do you have to do? You have to really understand the cause and the effect. Uh, the effect being that it's stable or the effect being that it's changing. And so the object that uh, we use to uh, understand stability and change is this half a semicircle, remember, because it can be unstable, it can also be stable. And so for me to explain how this works, it would be something about uh, the forces on either side are unbalanced, but when I put it flat, then that causes it to remain balanced. So what I'm really trying to do is use cause and effect to explain how this object actually works. So after watching this video, you should be able to explain uh, stability and change in objects like this uh, marble run, what makes it stay the same, what makes it change, and then in something like a complex interaction, this is the population of, of moose on Isle Royale. Uh, I'm going to start by showing you my thinking as we look around a simple balancing block with some cubes on it, and then you'll have a chance to show me your thinking as we just look at the interaction between this red ball and uh, a bowl that it's sitting in. So let me clear this off and then we'll get started. Okay, the first thing that I'm going to do is uh, just kind of demonstrate this. So I've got this semicircle. You can see it's just a bigger version of this, uh, and it can balance. So it sways back and forth. It's kind of hard for you to see that. But what I'm going to do is then put some weights on it. So if I put weights on it, you can see that it'll turn in one direction, or I could put weights on the other side, and it'll turn back in that direction. And so what we've got is something that is balancing as I put different weights on either side. And so the first thing I should do is define the system that I'm trying to investigate. So the system I'm trying to investigate is this balancing block, this semicircular block, and then it has these, these are magnetic cubes that sit on top of it. And so the first thing I'm going to do is let me try to explain what is it if this is stable? What is it like when it's stable? So let me try to define what stable is. It's always important for us to define what that is. And so I'm going to say that stable Let's just say stable is going to be that this whole thing is not going to move at all. In other words, there's going to be no movement back and forth. So if I say that's going to be the effect, let me write that down. So if I say the effect is that there's no movement in the balancing block, if I'm going to explain this, what I really have to figure out is what is the cause. So what causes it to not move in the balancing block? So let me put cause here. Well, I could put some blocks on this side, and if I let it sit there, it's just going to eventually balance. And so even though I've added one, like three blocks on the right side, I still see no movement in the balancing block. And so that tells me a little bit more about what it is to be stable. I could put more on the left side and eventually it's going to become stable. Or I could put a bunch on the right side and eventually it's going to, it's moving a little bit, but it's eventually going to come to a stop as well. And so what's causing it to have no movement in the balancing block? Um, the cause is that there is no uh, movement in the cubes. In other words, there's no movement in the cubes that are being added onto the block. And so that's a stable system, given this definition that there's no movement. Now you might say it's really tipped to one side, but it really depends on what I have set up as the effect that I'm really trying to talk about when I'm talking about it being stable. So the next thing we do is try to figure out, okay, what's the cause and effect then of that same system, but a system that's changing? And so let me lay that out. So you can see that in this sense, what I really have done is just chosen the opposite. If I want a system that's constantly changing back and forth, 
Really all I have to do is just add more cubes back and forth on the sides. And so you can see that this is the opposite of what it is to be stable. But let's say I want to change the system. And so I'm more interested in making sure that it's perfectly balanced between the left and the right. In other words, maybe I want the right and the left to be perfectly balanced. So there's, it's totally flat across the top. I could play around with this, but one thing I'm going to find for it to be balanced, I have to have the same objects on either side and they have to be the same distance from the center. So let me just kind of play with that for a second. So not only is it not moving now, but it's going to be totally flat. So the next thing I'm going to do is now try to update that. So what I've really updated is my effect. So let me erase these. So the opposite effects would be, uh, for it to be stable, I could say that it has to be perfectly balanced in the middle. In other words, this vertical line would be straight up and down. And then the changing would be it not being balanced in the middle. And so now I have to figure out, okay, what's causing that? And so these are the causes that I would put. So for it to be stable, what I have to have is an equal weight on either side. So an equal distribution of weight on either side. Also, it has to be kind of how far you are from the center because that wouldn't be perfectly balanced. And so if that's going to be what it is to be stable with it's perfectly balanced in the middle, then for it to change again, I have to have different weights on each side for it not to be balanced. And so what I'm really showing here is I'm explaining a stable system and then explaining a change system. And so what I want to do is clear these up and then I'm going to give you another uh, system that you could try to understand uh, or explain stability and change in. Okay, for this next example what I have is a red sphere and it's sitting inside this clear bowl. And so there's a couple of ways we could go at this. We could do it like this with it on top of the bowl and we could try to figure out what keeps this system the same, but let's just make it a more stable system. So I'm gonna put that red ball on the inside of the cup. So let me define the system. Okay, the system is going to be this stationary bowl. So I'll just hold this bowl and the red sphere that's on the inside. So what I'd love to have you do is show me your thinking. What is the cause and the effect of keeping that stable? In other words, keeping a red sphere inside this bowl. And then what is the cause and effect of changing, changing this system so that the red ball is not inside that stationary bowl? So take a second, pause the video, uh, you can use the thinking slides below or just a piece of paper to show me a cause and effect for a stable system and a changing system. Then unpause and I'll show you my thinking. Okay, so the first thing I would do is I'd always determine what's going to be stable. In other words, what's going to be our effect when it's totally stable? And so let me define the effect as the following. So I'm saying the effect is the red sphere remains in the bowl. I could also figure out the effect of a change. And now I have to figure out the cause. So in this case, if, if our effect for it to be stable is the red sphere remains in the bowl, it's a stationary bowl, you can see that I'm hitting it. I'm hitting it as hard as I can, but eventually if I hit it hard enough, then it's eventually going to leave. And so what would the cause be? Okay, so what I said here for the cause is to get the red sphere to leave, I noticed that I had to hit the red sphere very hard. So that's gonna change the system. What is it to keep it the same? In other words, the red sphere remaining in the bowl. Don't hit the red sphere or at least hit it softly. And so this is me explaining change in this system and explaining a stable system. But again, it depends on how we define what stable is. If we said stable is the ball outside the 
bowl or if stable is the ball kind of balanced on top of the bowl, then it's going to totally change what is the cause and effect of a stable system, what's the cause and effect of a changing system. So I've showed you how to explain stability and change with a couple of simple examples. Now that I've done that, you could do the same. You could try looking at a stable system uh, and defining it as the marble uh, run that's in uh, thinking slides down below. Or you could think really deeply about a living system. This is a system where the moose population on Isle Royale will sometimes be stable and then sometimes it changes quite a bit. And so what you try to figure out is what is causing that to change over time. So again, that is uh, thinking in stability and change. This is lesson three, explaining stability change, and I hope that was helpful.